Okay, in this problem, uh, we're given a system, and it we're told it consists of one kilogram of water, uh, and it undergoes a power cycle composed of the following processes, uh, and the processes are listed right here. Um, and we're what I want to do. I want to identify. I want to identify what my TV diagram is. I want to identify uh, my PV diagram, and I want to identify the pressure, volume, and internal energy at each state. So at state one, at state two, at state three, and at state four uh, for uh, this entire system using my thermodynamic tables. And I've loaded up some of the tables, so hopefully I can show you the tables as I'm talking about where I get my values from. So um, let's start with a TV diagram. Our TV diagram is going to have a set of axes like this. Uh, this axis is going to be T, our temperature. This axis is going to be V, our volume. And we're going to have some dome shape like this. This dome separates our two phase region from our single phase region. Uh, more specifically, our superheated region and our uh, superheated vapor and our subcooled liquid. So right here we have process one two and we're told it's a constant pressure heating at 10 bar from a saturated vapor okay saturated vapor means i'm somewhere on this line on this side of the curve uh the curve is going to be broken up this is going to be the critical point right here and on this side of the critical point is going to be vapor vapor on this side of the critical point is going to be liquid so it's uh saturated vapor it's going to be on this side of the critical point Here's uh, state one. Now, since this is a TV diagram and we're doing a constant pressure expansion, we know we're going to have these isobars all over our diagram. And these isobars are a bar of uh, constant pressure. So since we are going to have constant pressure heating, we're going to go up on this isobar and from this is our process one to two. And let's say we go that high, and now this is uh, process our state two. Uh, we're in somewhere in this uh, superheated region. Now, process two to three is a constant volume cooling. And we have one issue we don't know. We don't know if we're going to cool all the way into a two phase region, uh, or we don't know if we're gonna stay we're going to stay as a um, uh, superheated vapor. So we have to use our pressure chart and this is going to be table A3. And with this pressure chart, uh, we're going to look at uh, this piece of information right here. Yeah, right here. So. I've truncated this, uh, this table a little bit, so it starts at five bars of pressure, which is what I'm interested in, which is why I was a little confused for a second. Uh, but what we're, we're interested in doing is we're interested in looking at this temperature 160 degrees Celsius, and we're interested in looking at this temperature right here, this 151.9 degrees Celsius. Uh, this temperature right here is our saturation temperature. So our T sat is equal to 151.9 uh, degrees Celsius. Now remember, if our temperature is greater than T uh, saturation, that means we're in the, uh, the superheated vapor uh, region. And what do we know? 160 is greater than 151, so we are in this superheated uh, region, and we we are we're going to stay uh, above this uh, two-phase region. So uh, this is a good point to put it. So this is point three, and the only other thing I want to do is show. Oops, this is going to be another isotherm or isobar and this isobar up here is 10 bar 
and this one down here is uh, five bars. So what we used this table for was just to see if we were in the superheated region or the two-phase region. If we were equal to 151.9, we would have been in uh, this, this two-phase region. So I'm gonna hide this pressure table. Oops, uh, my ISO bars went away. So just put them back in real quick. Uh, this was five bar and this was 10 bar and this is state three right here. Okay, and now process three, three two, four, we have an isothermal compression. Uh, this isothermal compression is going to uh, mean we're going to just move in this horizontal direction uh, because uh, our temperature is this axis right here. So how far do we move? Well, we have to look at uh, process four to one. Process four to one is just constant volume heating. So since process four to one is a constant volume heating, and we know that this is a cycle, so we're gonna start at where, uh, we're gonna end at where we started, we know three has to go right to right under our first cycle. So it's going to go into this two phase region right here. And this is where our fourth uh, state is. And our last uh, process is going to go up like this. So this is our TV diagram. Now let's draw our PV diagram. Our PV diagram is a pressure specific volume uh, diagram. P is going to be on the vertical axis. V is still going to be on the uh, horizontal axis. And we're going to draw another uh, sort of vapor dome. So to make it look a little more like what I had before. And again, we know we're gonna start a constant pressure heating at 10 bar, so from a saturated point. So our saturated points right here, it's at phase one. And uh, it's a constant pressure heating on a PV diagram. Constant pressure is uh, horizontal because pressure is our Y axis. So we're gonna to go to state two right here. Now, uh, two to three is a constant volume cooling. Uh, so we know we're going to go straight down. And we also know that we're going to stay in this uh, superheated region because we did, we proved that in this TV diagram. So here's uh, part three, stage three. Now this uh, process through to four in isothermal compression uh, is a little more challenging on this diagram. Uh, just like we had these isobars, which are lines of uh, one type of pressure, uh, we're gonna have isotherms. And isotherms are sort of looking like this. They're the opposite direction of these bars, the isobars. So this is sort of what an isotherm looks like. Um, and this isotherm is 160 degrees Celsius because it tells us right here. And let's pretend I drew this better and three was actually on that line. Uh, so if we're going to have an isothermal compression uh, from state three, we're going to follow this line all the way up. And again, until we're right under uh, state one. So guess state one is right here. So we're in the two phase region and we take this weird sort of geometry because we're following this, uh, this isotherm. And then, so here's state four, and then we go constant volume from four to one. So this is our process on a PV chart. Now, I want to find uh, what my pressures are, my volumes are, and my uh, internal energies are at each of these states. I can fill some in just by the information given, but I'm going to need to use tables to fill in other parts. 
So if I look at state one, I want a pressure, so P1, uh, V1, and U1. Uh, state two, P2, V2, uh, U2. State three, P3, V3, U3. And state uh, four, let's do yellow, or color is important. So state four, P4, uh, V4, and U4. Now, uh, we know pressures. I'm just going to put all my units right here so it doesn't uh, clutter this all up. We know this is going to have a unit of bar. Uh, we know volume, since we're taking it from uh, the the tables, we're going to have a unit of kilogram, uh, not kilogram, uh, meters cubed per kilogram because it's on a per uh, kilogram basis. And specific, our uh, internal energy is going to be kilojoules per kilogram. And I'm just doing this so this is not, uh, doesn't get uh, messy. So uh, if we fill this in, we know one to two is constant pressure. So this is equal to 10, this right here. Let's stick with the same color. So this is equal to 10. P1 is equal to 10. Uh, P2 is equal to 10. P3 is equal to five. Uh, because it goes to P3 is equal to 5. And uh, we can't figure out P4 just from this uh, piece of information. But let's look at state 1 first. Uh, in state 1, uh, we want to figure out what our volume is, and we want to figure out what our internal energy is. Well, state 1 is a saturated, uh, a saturated vapor. So what we want to do is look at, not our temperature, our pressure table again. And with our pressure table, we want to look at what's going on at 10 bars. And we want to figure out our volume. So at 10 bars, uh, pressure is 10 bars. So oops, pressure is 10 bars right here. We know our volume is a saturated vapor because it's right on this line. So our volume is just going to be this uh, 0.1944. So our volume right here is going to be 0.1944. And we can also figure out our internal energy this way. Our internal energy is also a saturated vapor. So it's going to be equal to uh, 2,583.6. So right here, it's equal to 2,583. Point six. Um, so what you do, you look up the bar pressure you're going to, and then right now we're just using our saturated vapor because that's what that state is. Uh, okay, so uh, state two and state three are superheated. I don't want to do them just yet. Uh, I want to look at state four. State four is this two-phase region. So state four, I would say, is the second easiest one to deal with. Uh, at state four, we know we're going to be on this 160 degree isotherm. So we're gonna to wanna to open the temperature table. Uh, I think it's, t uh, yeah, table A2. And we know we're on this 160 degree isotherm. So we're gonna look up our temperature at 160 degrees. Oops. And that's right here. So that's great. Uh, but we don't know what the quality of this is. We're not giving any information on how much vapor we're at and how much uh, liquid we're at. So we have to figure that out. And we can figure that out like this. We know that our quality is equal to our volume of four minus our volume of our saturated fluid divided by the saturated vapor uh, minus the the volume of the saturated fluid. Uh, this is just uh, algebraic rearrangement of uh, equation uh, we know on when we're, we're given for V4. Uh, 
we know that v4, we know that we can find this because it's going to be the same as v1. v1 and v4 are the same because it's just a constant volume. So v4 is equal to 0.1944, uh, if I can read my own writing. Now, uh, if we substitute everything, all these layers, if we substitute everything we know into this uh, equation right here, we have V4, which is 0.1944, our uh, saturated liquid, which is this right here, uh, which is minus 1.1020, times 10 to the minus 3. Remember it's minus 3 because these are reported uh, the actual number times 10 to the third. So these are uh, have it's three orders of magnitude of 10 higher than what this actually is. And we want to divide this. So divide it by uh, our saturated vapor. So 0 0.3071 minus this uh, 1.102 times 10 to the minus 3. And when we do that, we get a quality of x, which is equal to uh, 0.6317. So it, uh, not quite where I drew it. It's at about 63%. This is important because with this quality of x, uh, we can figure out what our uh, internal energy is. Uh, we can say that our internal energy of 4 is equal to our saturated liquid uh, internal energy plus our quality times our saturated uh, vapor internal energy minus our uh, saturated liquid internal energy. And this is actually that equation I was talking about before that we rearranged to get what x was. Uh, but anyway, uh, we don't know what U4 is this time, so we're going to have this uh, this uh, number right here. Yellow is not a good color. This yellow is still not a good color. This uh, one right here, and this one right here. So this is our saturated liquid, uh, 674.86. This is not reported uh, times 10 to the third, so we can just leave it as it is plus 0.6317 of 2,568.4 minus 674.86, if you can uh, see that. And this becomes U4 is equal to 1,871. And... Let's write that for U4 is equal 1,871. Okay, so the last thing, uh, what's P4? Well, P4 is simply uh, uh, what's given right here because at this point, uh, the pressure is constant. The pressure is constant uh, at P4. And it's the same as, uh, it's sort of the saturation pressure that's going on. So, uh, you can, it's, uh, it's equal to 6.178. Okay. Uh, equal to 6.178. So finally, let's deal with state two and state three. They're both superheated states. Uh, looking at this, I'm going to get more information from state three because I know what temperature that is. it is at. Uh, so if I look at uh, 160 degrees Celsius at five bars, I'm at five bars and I want, uh, that's not good. Okay, sorry about that. Something uh, weird, glitchy happened. But um, so we're, we're looking at what was happening for state three, and we had this. Uh, we looked at the five bar table A four. I think I cut it off, so I have more room here. So this is uh, 
table uh, A4. And we want to look at it at 160 degrees. Well, we're not given 160 degrees. 160 degrees is somewhere between our saturation, which is 151.86, and this 180 degrees. So we're going to have to interpolate a little bit to get what our volume is. So if we interpolate, we're going to have, uh, we're going to look at this value, and we're going to look at this value and we're going to look at 160 because that's the value we're interested in and we don't know what this volume of 160 is so our interpolation equation is uh, 0.4045 minus 0.3749 divided by 180 minus our saturation temperature which is 151.86 and this is going to be equal to the volume we're looking for so our volume at uh, 160 minus uh, this part of the equation stays the same so uh, 0 0.3749 uh, divided by 160 minus 0.3749 Four, nine, and we're going to get a volume of 160 which is equal to 0.38 uh, 35 so right here our volume of state 3 is equal to 35 in our volume of state 2 because uh, it's a const again a constant volume uh, compression it's equal to 0.3835 uh, so all we need to figure out is this uh, state 2 u2 and state 3 uh, internal energy so internal energy is uh, easier to figure out uh, we're already here so we just need to interpolate between uh, these two values, oops, uh, between these two values this time. Again, yellow is not a good color on white. And 160 degrees. So it's the same type of equation except for you, instead of using volume, we're going to use uh, internal energy. So we're going to have Um, 2609.7 minus 2561.2 and this is over 180 minus 151.86 our saturated temperature and this is equal to uh, not H it's going to be U minus 2561.2 uh, over 160 minus uh, 2561.2. It's just a linear interpolation. And we get that uh, U3 is equal to, U3 is equal to uh, 2000 575.2 okay so the last thing we need to do uh, is we need to figure out what this u2 is and we can figure out what u2 is by looking at the saturation of 10 bars uh, um, I'm sorry the superheated table of 10 bars and we will we look at the superheated table of 10 bars uh, we're not going to look for the temperature we're going to look for the volume. So we know the volume is 0.3835. And that's going to be somewhere somewhere between these two numbers. We don't care what the temperature is. We don't really care at all what the temperature is. We can interpolate between these two specific volume numbers. So uh Let's do it this way. We're, we're interested in, in where this red is. So we're interested in this U 
right here. Uh, we, we know what the volume is right here because it's uh, the volume we have. So if we interpolate between this, we have um, 3,296.8 minus 3,192.6 divided by uh, 0.4011 minus 0.3729. And this is going to be equal to um, what we're looking for. So u minus 3192.6 divided by what the volume we know it is. So 0.3835 minus 0.3729. So what these numbers are, I'll try to show them. Uh, this right here is this uh, this one right here. Uh, this u value right here is this u value right here. Uh, this one, this u is what we're looking for. Um, and like any other interpolation, this value right here is this lower uh, value right there. And this 0.401 one comes from right here this 0.3729 comes from right here and this 0.3835 comes from the state which is uh what we're looking at so we can get our internal energy and this is equal to um 3231.8 if we interpolate this so this is how we get all our state uh, the pressure, volume, and internal energy for all our states using the uh, saturation and superheated tables.